Hey students, this is Mr. Roberts. We are now looking at lesson 10.4, box and whisker plots. Let's get into your bell work. All right, so uh, this little quick check C is something that you're gonna do with me. I just am putting it in here for my reference. Uh, so there, we'll be doing that together. Um, at my table, I'll be calling you guys back to do that. Um, but let's take a look at this bell work really quick. And it wants us to find the unit rate of each of these to see what is the better buy. And if you can just remember better, uh, when you want to find the unit rate or a better buy, we are actually going to take the, the money part, the price, and we're going to divide it by the total. So I'm going to type in my calculator, $49.95 divided by 5. And we get $9.99, and that's per one. Okay, so that is the price for one um, of whatever that sale is talking about. Now let's do the same over here. We're going to go $34.95, and we're going divide to divide it by three. So here we go, $34.95 divided by three. And we get $11.65. For one. So what's the better buy? Well, this guy's is the better buy because it's cheaper per one. And so that's what we're doing there. All right, it wants us to find the area of both of these triangles. So we're going to use base times height divided by two. So on this first one, we're going to go 9.4 times 5 and 25 hundredths divided by two. So I'm going to use the calculator for this. I'm going to go 9.4 times 5 and 25 hundredths divided by 2. And I get 24 and 675 thousandths meters squared. Okay, on this next one, I'm going to take the base, which is 11.2, and times it by 6.7, which is the height, and divide it by 2. So 11.2 divided by 6, or not divided by, 11.2 times 6.7, and then divide it by 2, and we get 37 and 52 hundredths meters squared. So those are the two answers for that one. Okay, it wants us to find a common factor on this one, so I'm just going to go like this. Okay, 5 goes into 45 nine times. And 5 goes into that 3 times, but we can also take out a 3 here. So take out that 3 and times it by that 5, and we get 15, 3 plus 1. There we go. There's your bell work. Let's move on. All right, today's lesson is all about box plots. And if you guys can remember that we, made the, we found the IQR, the IQR is part of this. If you can find the IQR... It's really simple from there to make a box and whisker plot. There are some things that you need to know about a box and whisker plot before we get fully into it. Let's take a look at here. The box and whisker plot, also known as a box plot, shows the five number, su number summary of a set of data. So the, fi the five number summary is a minimum, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, and the maximum. So minimum, lower, median, upper, and maximum. And um, this is what a box and whisker plot looks like, and we will show you how to build one of those on this little example right over here. But those are the things that you need to know how to find. The minimum number, the maximum number, your median, your lower quartile, and your upper quartile. And if you remember when we did IQR, that is what we found. So those are the the the, the metrics that we are we are dealing with there. So let's uh, take a look at this um, and make a box and whisker plot. It says, for a box and whisker plot, make a box and whisker plot for this data. For a science experiment, students planted seedlings and measured their height one month later in centimeters. The measurements were, there they are. Now, the way that this works is, of course, we have to put our numbers in order from least to greatest. So I'm just going to do that right here really quick. I'm going to start out at zero. Cross it off, one, no other ones, but we do have some twos, so we're going to go two, and then that's one, two, so one, two more. So one, so three twos. And then how many threes do we have? One, two, three, four. 
So we gotta go three, 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 three. Cross all those threes off. And then how many fours do we have? One, two, three, four, five fours. So one, two, three, four, five. Cross them off. One, two, three, four, five. And it looks like we have two fives and a six. So five, five, six. Okay, now we know what our minimum is, zero. We know what our maximum is, six. Now let's find the median. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 numbers. So we gotta find the middle. Now, if you have a, a struggle finding the middle here, um, you can you can use this method, and I'm gonna just use a highlighter because I don't want to mess up and not be able to see all my data after I go over it. So I'm gonna go cross off until I get to the middle. So you can kind of see that I'm just working my way to the middle here, and it looks like we're going to have one. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have three as our median. So let's write that down right here. We're gonna go our median is three. Then we can find the middle of the upper data. So we're gonna look at right here and go, okay, there's one, two, three, one, two, uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, so we have these two numbers. So my median's in the middle of that, so that's two. So I'm gonna go right here and go that's two. So quartile one is two. Quartile three, we're gonna kinda do the same thing. One, two, three, four. So these two numbers are the middle. So I'm gonna change colors here to just distinguish the difference. So right here in between those two is four. So we have quartile three is four. Okay, now that we have our five number summary, we can come down here and make a box and whisker plot with it. So this middle part right here, I'm just gonna extend it a little bit. I like to make mine a little bit larger. And this is the median, three, okay? And, uh, Let's make our, well, where we, if we were going to put this on a number line, our minimum would be back here at zero, right? And then our maximum would be here at six. Well, where would two be on here? So if we were to go one, two, two would be about right there. And then four would be about right here. And that's where we make our box. So I'm going to extend that a little bit. Extend that a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. So there's our box. So our Q2 is the starting of our box here. Uh, I'm sorry, not Q2. Q1 is the box. Um, Q2, Q3 right here. And then our whiskers are right here. You just extend those line out and make our whiskers. Okay, so what well, the whole point of looking at uh, a box and whisker plot is to be able to look at how spread out our data is. So what we're really looking at here, and I'm gonna use red to kind of show you, is from here to here is 25% of our data. From here to here is another 25% of our data. And again, 25 here. And then the last little bit right here, this to there is 25%. So what we're doing is we're breaking our data up into 25. And if this little part right here is really small, then we know that our data is skewed over here to the left. If it's really small over here, we know our data is skewed to the right. Um, we can also see how bunched up the data is. If these boxes are really big, 
then we know all of most of our data is in there. And then it would make these really, really short whiskers. And those short whiskers would be telling us, look, you don't have anything in the lower part of your data and the upper part of your data. So this one right here is symmetrical. I mean, because if you look at it, they're all about the same distance from each other. So this right here is symmetrical. The data is evenly distributed. So that is what you're really looking at um, when you're looking at a box and whisker plot. Let's look at some other examples on the next page. All right, so here's your practice. Mm, there are a few of them. I don't know if we're gonna go over all of these because uh, of time, but I am gonna go over a couple of them for sure. So I do wanna go over number one with you and let's get this or data placed in order from least to greatest. It looks like 55 is my smallest. Nope, I'm sorry, I was wrong. It looks like 52 is my smallest of the data there. Then it looks like we get up to 55. Then it lo looks like we go to 56. And 57. And I think that, nope, we do have a 59 too. Then it looks like we have a 60. Two, or 161. I can fit everything here. Then two 62s. And a 63, it looks like. All right, so we have our data in order from least to greatest. And remember, a five number summary is what's going to help us out here um, as far as putting these numbers um, in a box and whisker plot. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... I'm going to chart out my numbers here and just write them down. So I'm just going to go, this is 52, and I'm going to include all of them because <clears throat> you have to, that's part of the range. So 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63. Okay, so I'm gonna only be using from 52 to 63. Now, to make your box and whisker plot, we're just going to go, okay, I got my minimum number, it's right here. Put a dot there. I've got my maximum number, put a dot there. Now let's find the median and uh, the Q1 and the Q3. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 numbers. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got two numbers in the middle, it looks like. So our median is in between both of those, and that would be 59 and a half. Okay, that's our Q2. So I'm going to come over here to 59 and a half, and I'm going to draw, and I'm going to use my black. I'm going to go like this, make a, do a slash. Okay, <clears throat> now we need to find our Q1 and our Q3. Now remember, because the middle is right here, we have to count all of these numbers. So we're gonna go 56 is our Q1. And I like labeling things, so that's why I'm doing that. So I'm gonna come over to where 56 is and I'm going to draw another straight vertical line like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing up here. And I got one, two, one, two. So it looks like 62 is our Q3. And that is our five number summary. We have our minimum, our Q1, Q2, Q3, and our maximum. And we need to draw that little line uh, at 62, just like the others. Now we just have to take our vertical lines and connect them with a horizontal line like this. And then our dots go to our boxes, so our box and whisker plot. Now, you can see, and if you remember from what we were talking about in the vocabulary page, that we have 25% of our data here, another 25 here, another 25 here, and another 25 here. So we can see that we have a lot of data in between 52 
and 56. And if you look at that, it doesn't look like it, but that is, well, we, let me take that back. I said that backwards. We don't have a whole lot of data. That's why it's spread out. That seems almost opposite of what you wanted to, what we are thinking. But if this is a very long line, it means it's way spread out data. So you can see we only have one, two, three bits of data in here. Then we have this, it's kind of stretched out too. So in between 56 and 59 and a half, we have one, two, three pieces of data there too. So it's about the same as here. And you can kind of see that reflected in the size. And then right here from 59 and a half to 62, we have one, two, three, three pieces of data there. So it's pretty even. And then right here, look at this. We have 62 to six, we have two, three pieces of data there. It's bunched up right there. Why is that bunched up right there? Can you guys see that from Q3 to, or Q3 to my minimum, there is not very in any variation. There's only they're really bunched together. So you can see that that's bunched together. So that's what a box and whisker plot is doing for you. It lets you see how spread out the different quartiles of your data are. So in Q1, we're really spread out. Q2, same three thing. Q3, we're kind of spread out, not as much. And then in our last, our last quartile, we are really bunched up. We only have two different things it can be, 62 or 63. And that's why it's showing that whisker right there is really, really, really narrow. So that's how that works. Should we try another one? Um, let's do number two. Um, we're dealing with some numbers that are a little bit smaller, and that's okay. That It, it works the same way. One, one. I'm going to zoom in because I'm having a hard time writing that small. Then it looks like we have a two. Then it looks like there's two threes. Then a four. Then a five. Then a six. Then a seven. Okay. Now we are going to find our, so it goes one through seven. So that these number lines are here for you and we can skip, we can count by however much we want, but I think it's just easier to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we are going to find our minimum, put a dot, our maximum, put a dot. And now let's find our, our Q1. So we are going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There is my median. And that right there is where we put a line. Now we can find our Q1. It's one and a half. So I'm going to put another line at one and a half. And our Q3 is going to be at five and a half. Whoa, I moved everything. Five and a half right there. Now we're going to combine those and turn that to a box. We have a little whisker and a little bit of a longer whisker there. And there's your box and whisker plot. Again, you can look at that box and whisker plot and say, whoa. Look at this. Everything right here is all bunched together. It means that we don't have very many options, and we don't. One and two. And then we look at our media, we look at our Q2 here, right here, and we can see that it's kind of spread out. And that we have some, we have options from one and a half to three. It's not that. I mean, comparative to the other day, this one's the most spread out, isn't it? It goes from three all the way to five and a half. 
and then we have one that goes from five and a half to seven, which is, looks like about tied with this one. So that's all there is to making a box and whisker plot is finding your five number summary and then putting dots at the minimum and the maximum. And then, you know, vertical lines at your Q1, your median and your Q3 and turn it into a box. And again, it's just to be able to look at the spread of your data and see how spread out it is. All right. I am not going to go over all of the rest of these. Um, I think that you guys can handle it from here. So let's take a look at your assignment. Okay, so on your assignment, it wants you to make some box and whisker plots here. So we're going to be making a box and whisker plot for this data and this data. Then and down here, it wants us to look at the box and whisker plot, and it wants us to ask, answer some questions about it. Is the data more spread out below the first quartile or above the third? So below the first or above the third? Which one's more spread out? Well, that's pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Then it wants to find the interquartile range of the data. So find the inner, that means Q3 minus Q1. And the middle 50% has a range of what? So if we're looking at the middle 50%, our range from here, interquartile range, it it's the same answer as your IQR, so 13 minus 8. What are the most appropriate measures to describe the center and variation of the, of the distribution? So remember, we're looking at mean and median. Find the average of this and see if it fits your, if the median and the mean are close to each other. What percent of the cocoons are less than 10? Well, less than 10 from here would be 50%. What percents are between 13 and 15? Well, that uh, makes 25% of your data. Um, identify the shape of distribution. This is symmetrical. This last one is skewed to, let's see. I want you to see if, I wanna see if you can do that one on your own. All right, guys, if you need help, ask your teacher. Good luck.